Hey guys, I'm here with Eric Mete. We're here at Gracie Schwartz Hall. Um, and with everything going on uh, and people not being able to train, I'd ask questions about uh, techniques that people maybe wanted me to uh, show or demonstrate or discuss. And uh, I had a lot of good responses. But uh, one that I got a lot of people asking about was escaping when somebody has your back. And so we're going to go over some of the options to do to get out of when somebody is trying to control you from the back. Um, I don't want to just show some techniques because you guys might um, just forget the techniques. It doesn't really stick. I want you to understand what your goals are with uh, the underlying mechanics that you're trying to accomplish. Um, so first we have to understand what back control is really. Um, so can I get you to start a little bit? So there's what I call sort of greater and lesser back control. And um, the greater back control is simply the center of my chest glued between his shoulder blades. When I have this, it really doesn't matter where he goes, I'm going to stay with him the whole time. And I'm going to be in a position to be able to attack. So that's kind of the ideal position for me, and that's the last position he wants me to be in. Then there's what I call lesser back control. And that's any time I'm behind his elbow. Okay, so I'm not here, but he's not able to still turn into me. So for instance, can we turn this way? You'll see a lot of people turn this way. Call this technical mount. I actually call it technical back because I'm behind the elbow. Right? So there's nothing stopping me attacking all the techniques I could from behind. So even if he were to, let's say, start to escape, if I'm here and he tries to turn in, as long as I'm behind this elbow, he's not escaping. What he's got to do is get this elbow across, and then he's going to be gone. Okay? So our first goal is to beat his chest connected to my back, but then I've also got to clear the elbow. Okay? So those are two different battles. Okay? Um, so the other thing I teach people all the time with escaping is there is no one escape. Right? There's um, a timeline of escapes. It's why you have to practice your defense so you get comfortable along this timeline. And you have to recognize where on the timeline you are. Um, so one thing we have to understand is there's an early escape, right, which is always ideal. We want to practice those. Too often we practice late escapes. You know, the guy's got the full locked-in choke, what do I do? Right? Um, so, we want to practice early escapes, middle escapes, late escapes. If you only practice late escapes, you get in the habit of letting it get to that point. Okay? And not addressing the problem early on. So, we talked about he wants his chest glued to my back. Okay? So, normally, for instance, if we were here and he was say on top of me, I have frames, right? I can make the space with all my frames. The problem is when he's behind me, I don't have those frames anymore. So I can't push him off me, I can't push myself away. Um, so it's going to require different mechanics. So how do I disconnect his chest from my back? Well, um, the ground is going to have to do the job for me. Most of the techniques we're going to use, we're going to have to actually put ourselves in a position where we can kind of scrape him off of us. Okay, because I can't, again, use my arms or legs to push him off me. Okay, so that's really what we're going to focus on, is disconnecting his chest from our back. That's always your first goal, right? And often we're going to use the back, the ground, to do that. Okay? So we have a couple different options. Right? One is I can simply get my chest, I mean, uh, my back away from his chest, move away from it, uh, two is I can go right, left, back at angles, down to the ground, but any way that I can start to put my back on the ground in which he can't follow me. Okay, so what I want to really avoid is he's here, his chest is on my back. Let's just keep moving around where he just stays on my back. See, I'll never do this. Okay, but if I can scrape him off me with the ground, put myself, my back on the ground, not my shoulders. See, my back is still exposed my back on the ground where he can't follow me. Now, I've, I've broken that hold. I've broken that uh, chest to back connection. So the first one we're gonna talk about is when he has my back and I have an early defense. And what I mean by early defense is simply, he hasn't gotten his arms into any sort of position. He's not over under, he's not attacking my neck. It really, 
he hasn't locked his hands, he's really what I want to try to avoid. More specifically, he isn't under my arms, because this move won't work if he gets under my arms. Okay? So first we're going to talk about, um, or we're going to cover briefly, a couple of positions. Right? Um, in jiu-jitsu, most jiu-jitsu schools, the main fear when he has a back is him attacking my neck. Okay? A lesser fear is him attacking an arm. Right? But in reality, one thing that can happen a lot is simply I can get punched in the face. Right? I can be so worried about my neck that I take a couple good hard shots to the face. One of two things is happening. I'm either going to take a lot of damage, maybe lose the fight right there, or I'm going to expose my neck. Okay? You see this all the time in MMA. It happened with uh, Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz. He hit him once in the face, head came up, shut the choke. Okay? So we'll cover the hand positions to defend the punch. Again, that's always going to be your most realistic threat is getting hit. So we can't be so focused on defending submissions that we forget the reality of what people do. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to be in more of a sport mindset if he's not trying to punch us, just so it'll be easier to learn this technique. Okay, I want to keep my elbows glued, okay? And I want to protect my neck. There's all kinds of ways. I try not to hold the gi, simply because if you don't have it, it's not there. I take the back of my hand, Connect, connect. Now, the one thing I really got to focus on is keeping my elbows here so he doesn't get under my elbows on this one. Okay. So, right away, let me turn you this way a little bit. What I don't want to do is lean into him because I'm reinforcing this chest to back connection. I actually want to kind of lean away from him, which we'll see more. My legs are on the mat. I don't want my legs like this relaxed. I can't move. Okay. My legs are on the mat. I'm crunched up. Chin is tucked. I'm away. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my feet and I'm going to pull my hips away so I can put my chest, my back I should say, on the ground. Again, um, like I said, I can fall this way, this way, this way, this way. As long as he has this chest connection to my back, my shoulder blades, I'm in danger. Now, what I mean by that is if he has his chest connected to the top of my head or to my lower back, I'm not in danger. So for instance, right now, if he is very high on me like this, and he's trying to choke me. He's not really in a position to choke me. Okay, so that's what we're going to work on. Is I'm here, I'm crunched forward a little bit, I put my feet on the mat, and I start to scoot. Now I'm actually in a pretty good position. My back isn't on the mat yet, but it's no longer connected to his chest. Okay, my feet are still up. There's, I'm actually pressing into, even if he wanted to take his legs out right now, I can't. Okay. My elbows are tight, my legs are up, live, he's got tension on his legs, right? Okay. From here, okay, I've gotten as low as I can. That was one move, sometimes it may take you a couple times. The threat is no longer here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten one leg out, I'm going to use my elbow to kick off. Okay. Leg comes back up. Okay. My elbow is still, I'll put your hook back in. My elbow is still hit. Now I'm going to do a slight shrimp out. My elbow is in. This is very important. Okay? If I come up with my elbow outside his leg, he's just going to reassert my back. Yeah, he's just going to re-attack my back. Okay, so let's turn this way. I'm here. I'm forward a little bit. I'm not letting him get under my arms. I go. Got pressure. Knees up, feet close. I kick my leg straight. Clear off, hip out, elbow's going to dig under, okay. I'm going to switch my legs, clear. So my arms switch, turn this way a little bit, here. Now right away, to stop him trying to follow my back, I bring my head across. And notice I'm looking this way, my head stays this way, push my head this way, Which way? this way, yeah, he's going to come here. So as soon as I switch, my arms switch, and I go here. And then my arm comes underneath, and I drive up, walk, lift, and work here. Okay. So you see here, I'm leaning away, I'm not doing this. See how my neck starts to open, and I reinforce that connection. I'm coming away. My feet pull. Sometimes, we have to wiggle that. Okay, let's turn it this way a little bit. Here. 
Chin is still tucked just because I don't want to try. Even if I'm like this up. He's pushing up into my chin. He's not really attacking the neck. But still, I'm here. I can even do a little hip turn. Straighten. Peel. Move. Elbow in. Okay. Right here, I can switch my legs. My arm comes. This arm goes around. I come to my knees. As I do, I look to the other side. I come under. Get into our passing position. Okay. Now there's a variation if you feel kind of uncomfortable turning in over under, like you're afraid of maybe walking into a triangle. Um, or you're just very conservative, the guy's got a good guard. And here, I'm going to kick the leg as before again. I don't want to be like this. Because right now, he's going to take his legs out and start to come up to his knees behind me. I'm in, stuck here. So I actually want to kind of lock his legs in place until I'm ready to go. So here, I'm kind of pinning his legs right now. Okay. Then, straighten, move out. Now both arms are going to come under, and I can come in to my stack pass position. Okay. And that is our early defense. Again, what we're looking for is I'm putting my back, or as much of my back, on the ground and sliding down his body so he no longer has his chest connected between my shoulder blades. Okay? Once I'm there, I'm very easy, easy for me to break the, the leg hole. Again, this move will not work once he gets under either arm. Here or over under. That can't slide down now. Okay, so this is an early defense before he's established any sort of hold. It also works if the guy doesn't really know what he's doing, he just goes straight over both shoulders attacking my neck. I'm gone. Okay. So, um, that's our early defense when somebody takes your back.